Okay, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, March 13th, 2014 at 1811 hours. I guess I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty, all. all right, thank you. Let the uh, record show that uh, Director Fox and Director Branch are joining us by phone. Uh, Director Wisniewski is absent and excused. Um, any ad additions or deletions to the agenda? Yes, uh, I have one deletion <coughs> under financial matters, year end financials. Uh, I'd like to delete uh, pending further consultation with our. Uh, Accountant. And uh, we need to add a uh, an item under financials. Uh, um, so you're deleting year-end financials. Deleting year-end financials and adding uh, Bank of the West credit card limits. Okay. Uh, motion to make that change. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any other uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? I have none. I have none. I'm good. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda has changed. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That will take us to our first item of business is the legal update. <clears throat> All right. Um, first of all, you have in your packet a resolution authorizing the purchase of the apparatus which Chief has um, uh, drawn up and uh, I reviewed, made a couple of uh, suggestions which I understand have been accepted. Basically, uh, resolution 2014-3-1 um, now states that, um, that the bid from E1 uh, will be accepted subject to a purchase agreement that is satisfactory to the district and that the purchase agreement that the chief is um, authorized to negotiate and enter into that agreement um, uh, in, in the amount not to exceed $567,808 for two apparatus and, um, and in consistent with the uh, uh, bid documents that we've already gone through, we can't change those. So, and, and of course, Bill knows that, but I mean, it is, you know, that's where we've got to go forward with this. So, um, uh, <clears throat> since that's the first item, I will recommend an adoption of that resolution. And it's presented in your packet. Uh, so moved. All right. Second. Okay. The motion to adopt resolution number 2014-3-1. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. All right. Um, the uh, next item that I uh, had is the election update. I've put in your packet or in front of each of you uh, with your packet is the notice of cancellation, certified statement results of the election. Um, Mr. Fox, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Wisinski have all been um, re-elected uh, and are hereby declared elected for four-year terms going until May of 2018. And that um, um, the actual filing and up um, um, dating of your records cannot happen until uh, after the May 6th election. So we'll do it at your May meeting, at which time the new um, the three uh, re-elected um, directors will be sworn in, and and once we have that in the um, bonds, then we um, upload this to the state and then it's done. But it's done now, but for the fact that we can't do it until you've been sworn in and the bonds are done. So that's what's going to happen. So uh, congratulations to the uh, Mr. Fox, who can hear me, and Mr. Rogers. Yes, and thank you. Uh, and, um, um, you know, I'm sure that you just enjoy the next four years as much as you enjoyed the last four. Maybe a little better. Maybe a little better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the next thing is the 
uh, Powell Credit, we did get a notice of a limited receivership from them. Uh, if you remember, Powell is who was doing all of our collections, and they got in 2011, it was before I came, so I think it was sometime in 2011, they got a big chunk of collections, and they were pursuing those and getting you some money, but then in 2013, um, they stopped paying you any money, and, uh, um, and so Chief got involved, Marie got involved, and I finally got involved, and we kind of got that straightened out uh, by threat of lawsuit, and um, they um, went ahead and um, uh, paid us what they claimed was appropriate up through um, some point in November, and well, actually, in the through September, and then after that, Marie collected some more money um, that took us into November, right? One extra payment. One extra payment, yeah. So maybe that was October. I don't know. So we're still <clears throat> owed, probably owed some money, but by December they were basically out of business. We reported that that they were um, uh, under investigation by the state, and that they had closed. Um, uh, we had a, um, a committee meeting, and the committee agreed that we would um, uh, turn the existing files over to their lawyer, Becky Kyle, who had a um, uh, direct pipeline into a Powell's computers and could pull all that stuff, even things that had not been assigned to her. She was going to look at all that for us and start um, uh, collecting that. So that has been done. Um, we also said as a um, recommendation to the board that we would go forward with a, um, um, any misdirected payments would be uh, sent for collection. And what we de define misdirected payments to be is payments that were made, for instance, to the policyholder, and then the policyholder was expected to send it on to us. It could be other people that receive that, but mostly it's the policyholders who get it, and then they don't, you know, for whatever reason, they don't send it to us. The committee felt that that would be the only thing we we're going to really chase at this point. Uh, Bill can uh, explain it in more detail. I know we've discussed this in some detail in the past, but Bill can explain it in more detail. Um, that uh, based on the numbers that he's seen, it's just not going to be cost effective to uh, even on a contingent uh, fee basis to chase what little bit is left because a lot of what we have to write off is Medicare and Medicaid. You can't you can't chase it. It's illegal. So um, then you have um, uh, another group that you can't. Or, chasing them really doesn't do you any good, and that's people who with uninsured or underinsured motorists that are um, involved in an accident we take down the hill. Um, you, you just, I mean, you can do it, but it's not cost effective. So you really only have a small group of, of people who, for whatever reason, have assets and just won't pay, or aren't turning over their insurance company or whatever, and his uh, group, and I point to the chief, I mean, he's the one that introduced us to this group, and I, now that I'm familiar with them, I think it's a really good um, idea for um, ambulance districts and fire districts to look at. Um, they make several attempts, and then they write it off and give it back to you, and then, you know, you can turn it over to Apollo if you want, or a collection agency. But, you know, after you've already taken off those groups I've already described, what did we decide? 70%, 60, 70% of, of it is already gone at that point? Or more? Right, right. And the, the total amount that we were seeing after collections was about 6% yeah. uh, of what we sent to collections. So, uh, so, and every time we have to have a lawsuit, somebody has to take off her from her duties here and go down and testify in Jeffco or wherever. Um, technically, it could be fair play, but it should be mostly in Jeffco. But, uh, um, you know, it's just, we just did the math, and it, 
and it doesn't make sense. I, I didn't believe it when I came to that meeting. I was, I was really thinking we need to do something more. But after we looked at the numbers, is that what we came up with? It was about 6%, 6 I think. 6%, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Stan, you're on the line, so why don't you give your impressions of that committee meeting? Can you hear me? Stan? I'm sorry, I missed the last point. Uh, We'd like you to give your impressions of the committee meeting as far as collections go. I thought it was very productive. I thought we reached a couple of uh, uh, pretty good solutions with uh, input from Marie. So I think we're on the right track. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Um, so anyhow, the committee recommends that we we continue to monitor this. We're not. Uh, we're not setting some policy in stone. We just aren't going to send anything over except these misdirected ones, and we'll send those to Becky Kyle. She has a good attitude and seems to want to work with us. And, and, uh, well, you're on the, you're on the, uh, the house phone here, so. Well, and let me come over then, because it's probably just not picking up my voice. What I was saying. Okay. What I was saying is that the committee is just recommending that um, for the time being we continue to monitor um, the collections and see how uh, much is um, slipping through the cracks by not being more aggressive by sending things to collections, but that given um, the, the numbers that we have now and the calculations that we had, that the only thing that the... Um, committee recommends that the board de, uh, go forward with is the misdirected uh, payments that should have come to us but for whatever reason went to somebody else, either the insured or somebody else. And so that we um, try and collect those through a collection agency if they're, if they're not uh, uh, sent forwarded to us in a reasonable way. And that, um, and exactly uh, how we're going to do that, whether Marie sends a, a nasty gram or whether I send an initial one or we just turn it over to Becky. I don't think we really decided that. We were going to kind of check that out and see what happened. But that was my understanding and stand of what we were going to do. And I'm getting mostly a nod from the chief over here. So uh, is that your recollection? Uh, just a minute, Greg. Uh, what's that? I could have been mad from you as well. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, Greg, why don't you make a motion if you are so inclined uh, to go forward yep. uh, with that? Yes. Yes, yep. I'll make a motion that we uh, go after those redirected funds and uh, we uh, uh, work with Marie to put the appropriate documents to, uh, together to, uh, to do exactly that. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right. Um, the uh, other remaining thing, Stan, I'm coming back over. Um, the other remaining thing that we um, have uh, outstanding is that uh, for whatever reason, um, the complaint that we received last uh, from a call from last summer against two of our uh, emergency medical services people. Um, has had been closed and we reported that, Chief and I reported that I think last month, wasn't it? Yeah. It's now been reopened um, based on additional complaints from the, uh, uh, the complainant and that they, um, someone in, in the hierarchy down there said, well, let her bring in more information. That's all we know. Um, we have complained about that um, and says that, you know, there's appeals, there's all kinds of rights that she could bring, but um, whatever reason, they apparently have reopened it. We don't even know what that means because under their rules and under the Administrative Procedure Act, we don't see how that can actually even occur, but it has. Um, Chief has uh, informed uh, the individuals. Um, we are uh, monitoring this and um, believe both substantively and procedurally that our people um, have done nothing wrong and that everything is going to 
be dismissed, but unfortunately, uh, what I reported last month that it was closed investigation um, uh, got reversed, and it's now again an open uh, one. We've called um, uh, to get a, an update, but have not gotten an, uh, anything. Chief, have you gotten anything? No, he's saying that he has not gotten anything either. So, as far as I so know, Richard, 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 uh, Greg here, just real, real quick, just to clarify. Um, I understand what you've just said, but but why why was it closed? It was closed based on what 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 caused this person to close it? Oh, and, the, and, uh, uh, yes, there was no. Uh, they found no evidence. And okay. and so, so they found they found no evidence, and now all of a sudden this person has miraculously found some evidence. Well, and and the problem is is that the what is troublesome, Greg and. And you're asking me to logically explain something that I'm incapable of logically explaining. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hear you. but uh, um, the problem um, is, with the new evidence is that um, part of it has nothing to do with our care. It was um, had to do with uh, uh, care that um, was after we had. Um, uh, given her over to St. Anthony's. The other part of it was the, a, some additional complaint that she never acquiesced in helping um, us by walking to her front door so we could put her in, um, on uh, a pram and transport her. And so, um, I, you know, but that, I guess they can look at that, but that seems a little over the top. But, I think those were the only two things, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I appreciate the clarification, and I just implore uh, the chief and you, Richard, to be all over this because uh, I, I uh, uh, based on what I previously knew on this as well, it, it, it doesn't smell right to me, and um, you know I, I just want to make sure that uh, we're not just rolling over. Well, trust me, <laughs> we're not. So I'm sorry. And uh, Stan, what were you going to say? Part of it was that we were pursuing her on um, paying us, um, and part of it was now I understand that there was a, uh, um, there is a demand for an apology. So th those are the two things, um, you know, and um, uh, as I understand it, I, I'm not aware of any uh, claims for uh, monetary recompensation of any kind, but uh, I haven't heard that, but, you know, like, that may be in there somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. And one, one last question. When, when do we expect to have additional information on this as far as how it's proceeding? I hope to have it. Uh, wrapped up by your May meeting. Good. I, I, I really can't. I mean, at some point, the state has to be answerable. Um, I mean, you know, I understand that, you know, you pay some of your people and some of them are volunteers, but there are a lot of agencies throughout the state that are all volunteers, and this is exactly the sort of, and I'm just going to call it what I perceive it to be, Greg, is kind of a witch hunt that drives uh, volunteers away from agencies such as ours. Well, that's exactly why I'm saying and imploring them not to roll over, because that's how I perceive it as well, and it's ticket me. Yeah, it's wrong. I mean, there's no question. And, and the chief feels exactly the same way you do, and trust me, he's, um, he's even if I wanted to roll over, he's not going to let me, because it's his people, and he has to look them in the eye. And We're just not going to do that. I mean, Hey, come on! I I was a volunteer once, and I would have been terrified to have you know the state investigating me without the district supporting me, and that's you know that's just wrong, and we're not doing that obviously. But it's uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean it it should have. It, there's always a finality in any case, and that's usually you know when there's a judgment brought in, um, that's the finality. Then if there's something further. It's an appeal. That's what should have happened here, and it didn't. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. Marie, do I have anything else? Chief, do I have anything else? I don't think so. I think that's it.
All right, that'll take us to review and approval of the February 13, 2014 regular meeting minutes. I, uh, there are a couple little typos in here which I showed Marie. That okay, will be correct. Mr. Rogers, if it's all right, I'm going to excuse myself unless someone has questions. I mean, I can stick around for a little while. No, I think we're good. Good. We're good. Thank you. I will be not here next month. I will have a substitute here. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I do have some things that we will have reports on. So okay. Even though I won't be in time. All right. Thank you. Greg, are you good with uh, February minutes? Yes, I am. Stan? My name is Will. Okay. Do you have anything else, Alec? No. Okay, motion to accept. So moved. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion pass. Financial matters. Um, you have in front of you the usual uh, report. This is the report for February 2014. Total expenses for that month are $128,845, and I move those expenses be approved. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Um, your uh, agenda we've uh, changed because the uh, year-end financials for 2013 are still under review, and we have some questions for the accountants, and we will uh, uh, hopefully take those up next meeting. Uh, the only other thing I have is this uh, uh, Bank of the West credit card situation. As I understand it, Chief, we need uh, to have a higher credit limit for the department credit cards to take care of the, uh, especially when people are deployed. Right. Um, even uh, even just in normal travel, um, you know, the, the credit cards have a, have a limit of $1,000. And for example, when we were bringing the fire engines back from Michigan, uh, costs about $300 to put a tank of fuel in one of those. Uh, so, um, you know, that would have gotten us about uh, to Iowa, and then we would run out of uh, cash. We ended up um, having to, you know, I had to basically front the money on my credit card, um, as did uh, Lieutenant Parks. Um, then last summer we had the same issue with people that were out uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, by the end of the first week, they run out of money to buy fuel, and they have to buy it out of pocket and then uh, have reimbursement. So what we're asking is that uh, we may make that request to raise the credit limit and also to reallocate it so that uh, the, um, those credit cards have sufficient funds to you know, handle fuel and fuel meals and other travel expenses. So well, I think I caught everything except I didn't hear what the new limit is. That, well, what, uh, we haven't mentioned it yet. Um, okay. We have an aggregate limit now of $10,000, is that correct? And what we're doing is we're simply raising, asking the bank to raise that limit to $15,000. And that's for all the credit cards that have been issued to us. And uh, the chief uh, will allocate those among the personnel that uh, he feels is necessary to have them. So all the bank needs from us is this uh, resolution to uh, to increase our uh, to increase our limit to fifteen thousand dollars, and I make that motion at this point. Okay, so your motion. Okay, you want to read that one more time? The motion is to authorize an increase in the credit limit from ten thousand dollars to fifteen thousand uh, dollars at the Bank of the West for credit cards. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that motion carries. Anything else? That's all I have. Any financial questions? Greg or Stan? No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, that'll take us to the fire chief's report. Okay, um, February was uh, relatively quiet for the district. We had a uh, total of 82 calls, um, of which only one was a fire. It was a chimney fire, and we had no fire loss during the month. Uh, surprisingly, we also had a fairly light uh, uh, month for uh, motor vehicle accidents. Uh, in fact, uh, in the entire month, we had fewer accidents than we did uh, just the other day, um, which I don't think March is going to be quite the same. Uh, it got uh, got pretty 
pretty busy here for a, a little bit there. Um, response times continue to be around, you know, uh, between eight and nine minutes, um, and our turnout per call still continues to be about six uh, personnel. Uh, we are in the middle of a very heavy training schedule now uh, with uh, Firefighter 2 has completed. We've got uh, a number of people in the EMT class and we're getting ready to begin the driver operator training for all personnel and also the uh, annual spring wildfire training. Um, we do have one grant out that uh, we're going to be uh, hopefully hearing about within the next two weeks which would be to um, update our uh, cardiac monitors on the um, uh, the ambulances. Those uh, monitors, which are relatively fairly expensive, and they run about $35,000 a piece, and our service contract uh, ended on them, uh, and um, we're, we asked for a grant to pay for the uh, service contract so that we can continue to update those and have the have any repairs made on them. And then also to replace the two, uh, two out of our three stretchers are manual uh, that have to be lifted, and then the third one is electric that uh, you know lifts the patient up into the ambulance. So we've asked also for grant funding to replace the two manual ones with electric uh, stretchers. Um, we've got quite a bit on, in terms of apparatus. Obviously, um, we already discussed the apparatus bids. We had two bids in. Uh, of which E1 was the uh, lower bid, and uh, it's also, it looks like uh, the apparatus is much closer to our, our uh, specifications, so, and, and obviously we've already uh, had the motion to, uh, uh, you know, approve that uh, contract. We're looking at, um, you know, they give us a date of about nine months on, on delivery on those, but uh, they do that just to be on the safe side. So it may be uh, sooner than that, hopefully. Engine 31 by, is... By the, by the way, by the way, Chief, real, real quick, um, what, uh, on, back, on, back on that grant, uh, when do you expect to hear? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you think the, uh, the likelihood of uh, approval is? Uh, we should hear within the next two weeks. And uh, I would say that the likelihood is very, very good of getting that particular grant. Okay, thank you. Sorry for interrupting. No problem. Okay, so engine 431 is back from uh, repairs, um, but uh, went back out for service uh, because of a heater core issue that apparently uh, had been um, reported by the crews a couple of times during the past year, but not ever repaired. So that uh, has just been finished uh, uh, being repaired by uh, Evergreen Fire. Um, and we have uh, put the, one of the two new Type 3 engines in service um, that is up on uh, Conifer Mountain. And we've got a few more equipment items that we need to get moved over uh, to put the second one in service. We anticipate that within the next 10 days or so. Um, one of the things that we did find as we were going through this process, though, is that you know, we took a lot of the spare hose and uh, the other equipment that... Um, you know, our reserve equipment uh, to put on that engine and found that uh, a lot of it was less serviceable than, uh, than um, desired. Uh, we've got an issue where we basically, uh, the number of SCBA that we have uh, doesn't meet the NFPA standards for having uh, spare equipment and uh, because we've had a number of those that have had to be repaired, we're actually down on those We've uh, got a, quite a bit of um, hose that needs replacing this year. And then the other one that we've really been having uh, a lot of issues with lately has been uh, radios. Uh, a lot of our radios, uh, uh, you know, we've been basically going through a battery, uh, you know, in less than a year on those. And um, the batteries cost uh, about $100 a piece. Uh, and part of it is that uh, the, those radi radios were never rated for fire uh, use. They were really, they're below the standard specifications for fire radios, so they are, um, uh, we've been having problems with them breaking on a regular basis, 
uh, but they're really, they're really not, we're not intended for heavy duty use, is that what you're saying? No, no. If you look at, uh, you know, the, the companies out there, they, they have a couple different um, brands of radios or lines of radios. And uh, the ones that we currently have on our fire engines were intended for use in taxi cabs or, you know, uh, truck you know, companies or things like that. They were never intended for uh, fire use or public safety use. And um, so we've got a, a, probably five or six of them piled up on a shelf in there of the truck radios that uh, aren't uh, really useful to us. And then the handheld radios, as I was mentioning, um, you know, we routinely have problems with them not, uh, you know, the one, for example, in my truck, the battery lasts about three minutes after I take it out of the truck each time. So. And how, how, how old is the average one of these? Um, they're, they're quite a few years old. Uh, they were, I would say most of them are between five and ten years old, which is probably okay. at the, the outside of what their service life was intended to be as well. So uh, well, I don't mean to put the cart before the horse, but I would ex I would expect that you would uh, no doubt be looking forward uh, and looking to you know put put uh, I won't even call it a proposal, but but an option together to look at to potentially uh, replacing these. And and that is what I'd like to do is uh, you know we budgeted two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars for fire apparatus, and we're on right. schedule with our apparatus replacement and. In fact, with the Type Threes coming in as quickly as they did, we're ahead. Uh, but we're not going to actually expend that two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars this year. Uh, for example, the the trucks that we just financed, the first payment won't be due until uh, February of next year. Uh, so, what I would like to do is to uh, work on uh, getting uh, some of our equipment up to where it needs to be, and. Uh, you know, use that money that's currently in capital for for fire equipment instead. Uh, I don't think so, Stan. Uh, do you think so, Mike? Uh, it's just a, it's just it may may require later on at the at the end of the year to uh, look at the budget to see if it needs to be modified. But uh, I think since uh, it's within the scope of the chief's discretion to spend that money. I think he's just really informing us of. Yes, that's that's correct. At this point, you know, we're not uh, we're not anticipating going uh, going over budget in any in the budget. Uh, we're just uh, expecting to reallocate within the budget to uh, move equipment purchases up, and uh, uh, basically, you know, we'll be paying for some of those apparatus, you know, uh, in next year's budget instead of in this year's budget. That's something that would have, was going to happen anyway, just because of the timing of uh, financing those. Okay. Uh, the other, the only other thing, um, we did sell uh, the old Jeep Cherokee and the and the pump truck, um, and then we also got bids on the Type Six engines. And unfortunately, although the the fire district paid. Two hundred thousand uh, dollars for those rigs, um, and they're only ten years old. Uh, the bid that we got from uh, the broker was twenty-five thousand, and um, that's primarily because of two issues that they have. One being that they have single cabs, and basically, you know, it's a single cab truck that we expect three firefighters to to ride in, and frankly, there just isn't room for three firefighters in there. And then the, the other issue is that um, both of those trucks have the uh, six liter Ford diesel engine, which uh, basically nobody will buy now uh, because of the n number of problems that we've had. And that's a big reason that we've been looking at trying to move those two uh, trucks out of the fleet. So currently what we're looking at doing is uh, we're getting bids on uh, purchasing new Dodge crew cab chassis and moving the trucks over uh, onto those. And I think that uh, we would actually be able to sell those trucks on new chassis uh, for considerably more than the cost of purchasing the chassis and doing the work, um, you know, compared to the 25000 that we're liable to get. 
You know, those trucks. You're saying you're saying you're saying with window dressing uh, would more than justify this uh, this this sort of adjustment, and we'd be well ahead. Yes, that 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 is what it, uh, the numbers are looking like right now. We're waiting on getting firm numbers on it, but I think that we would probably make money by, you know, basically sending them to a shop to be moved over on a new chassis and then and then selling them rather than selling them as is at, at really a very f low fraction of uh, their original value. So are you expecting by the next board meeting to uh, have a recommendation and, and uh, potentially something for us to act upon? Is that your thinking? That, that is correct, yeah. I think we're going to wait on uh, trying to sell those at this time, uh, and by next meeting we should have all the numbers uh, for making those changes. Okay. Okay, and then the, uh, the last thing that I had uh, on here is I did draft up a, um, a first draft of uh, ambulance billing uh, policy and procedure based on the discussions that we had at the last uh, at the uh, um, collection committee meeting. And it's fairly, um, uh, fairly bare bones. I mean, what we're looking at is just you know, a brief explanation of what our rates would be, you know, how we would bill, and when we would, um, uh, you know, again, pursue those claims or not pursue uh, claims. But it leaves a lot of discretion for the fire district, particularly in the case of, you know, deciding not to send people to, le um, to collections that uh, have financial hardship, but uh, definitely pursuing those people who, actually got their money from their uh, insurance companies and just didn't pay us. So uh, that's there for, as a first draft for your review and um, you know, we can do, look at that again by the next meeting and determine if that's, uh, that's acceptable uh, direction for the district to go. Anything else? That's all. Any questions for the chief? I'm good. Uh, that'll take us to old business uh, financial policy and procedures. Uh, and that was that was one part of it there. Okay. Yeah. And right. Likewise with the collection. First draft. All right. Okay. Any new business from the board tonight? I have none. <clears throat> any citizens' issues tonight? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. For a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. 1849.